Right, so this is just going to be a quick video showing you what's new in XBMC MU Station. Now it's been a few months, uh, three months, over three months I think, since the last video. And quite a lot has changed since then. So, uh, first things first, there is new settings in the UI settings. So now you can use resources previews for Xbox and ports. Uh, what that means is, if you use XBMC for gamers, then the resources uh, folders that you place in with your games or homebrew or emulators, whatever, will be able to work with this. So you'll be able to watch the videos that you have for the synopsis information and stuff like that. Uh, default to last list, same thing. Home screen customization is different now. Um, it's now themes. So that means you can make your own home screen, your, ho your own layout, so you can have whatever look you want right down to the home menu. So to change, you just use left and right in the D-pad and you can cycle through them. So there's a new theme called Carbon Alt. And what this is, is it lowers the bar down the bottom and makes the preview larger. Uh, but I'll just set it back to the normal one. Now there's quite a few uh, source edits to XBMC. Uh, I fixed, or well, I ported the fix for the set focus list, or the set focus command. Um, it now focuses based on the entire list rather than just the current page. And what that allows is uh, jump to later and fit a random select ROMs and stuff like that and I'll show you that. So other settings is different as well. Um, you now got custom paths, can't remember if they were in the previous video. Uh, now it uses PNG instead of .tpn. So for your images, your preview images or your thumbnails I should say, uh, now uses .png. So what that means is if you use the Resurrection X ROM sets, it's literally just drag and drop for your images rather than have to rename them all. Um, if you've got a previous build, you just run this, it will do everything for you and you don't need to do anything. Uh, patch emulator saves, can't remember if that was in the last video, that's for Mad Map emulators. What that does is when you install a new one, it will patch the XBE file to use its root directory as its main directory instead of the root of E. Uh, the scripts have been updated, optimised, there's new scripts. Um, the, the synopsis is now in zip files, so when you transfer it over, it transfers a hell of a lot faster, because it's only like 18, 19 zips, instead of, like, God, don't know how many thousands of text files. Uh, and when you scan in a specific system that has synopsis, it will extract the zip file, delete the zip file and pass all the synopsis for your games and stuff like that. I'm not going to show you that, you can do that yourself. Uh, sound settings the same. So, I'll quickly show you. So, all the layouts are all new. Um, I updated all the layouts. Uh, as you can see down the bottom there, there's no new options. So, you can have previews for games. Um, if you press the A button it will stop it or you can use the up and down D on the D-pad to cycle through. So as you see it will go down and not all games. I don't have all videos for this one. Show you this combat's going. Yep. So another option is if you press the black button it brings up jump to letter. So now you can cycle through letters. And this is due to the fix in Kodi that allows you to cycle a set using set focus properly now. It used to be it would only jump down the way, but it wouldn't go back up, so it was useless. Um, and I'd implemented this a long time ago, but I couldn't use it. Uh, let's see, so random. So, for example, if you press the X button, it will randomly select a ROM and you press the A button and you can play it if you want. Now the random works with 
anything that uses XB files, so the Applications menu, the Ports menu, or the Xbox menu. So now you can have random Xbox games, so say you can't decide what you want to play, just press the X button and it will pick one for you. Right, uh, you can have previews, like I said, for the Xbox games. Now you can't have synopsis information for them because I don't use static menus. If I was to use static menus, you wouldn't be able to have a context menu. And what that means is you wouldn't be able to update trainers and stuff like that and go to game saves, etc. So the trade-off is you get a big nice thumbnail and you get a nice big preview. Depending on the game, you can have higher quality videos, etc. Now, I'll quickly show you the alt carbon theme. Now, the layout's different for this one. Um, like I was saying, you can have custom uh, layouts per themes. And if there isn't a layout for a specific theme, it will default to the default layout. So now there shouldn't be any issues and stuff like that when it comes to using a different theme. So this is the carbon alt theme. And the video is played down the bottom right. Etc. Uh, mainly most of the changes are in the back end, are mainly in the scripts and the XBMC source. You know, like for instance, swapping skins here or themes. Uh, I had to edit the source and add it, basically make it when it reloads the skin, it will change, it will refresh, and it will run the script and stuff like that. What Doing that, doing it that way means as you can come in here, change the change the theme, and it will change in here. Uh, previously, you couldn't do that, so that just means if people come in here and change it, it will change anywhere. So you can change it in the start menu, or you can change it in the settings menu. Uh, i um, changed the FTP server next in XPMC, the XML file. You can now have up to six simultaneously simultaneous connections. So that means faster transfer of files, uh, mainly small files. Uh, the, the video playback is new, like I said. Um, synopsis and zips is new. Um, it will also auto rename all ROM files. So for instance, the problem I face with uh, Python is you can use sort uh, OS list directory. Now the problem with that is, is it doesn't take into consideration what well, takes into consideration the character set, so capitalization of letters, etc. So if you have ROMs that have lowercase, so they start with a lowercase p, for example and the rest of the ROMs start with uh, an uppercase first character, the lowercase one will be put at the bottom of the list. Now to get around that, the script will auto rename every single ROM lowercase. So I did have it so that it would rena uh, rename the first character capital, put the first character as capital, but I prefer the lowercase because it's just more consistent. Um, that's all done when you're scanning the systems in. Oh, there's new emulators as well. All the emulators are up to date. Uh, there's ZX Spectrum, uh, Virtual Boy, Game Boy is a new one as well. Um, the SNES or the NES emulator has been updated. The Genesis emulator has been updated to the latest one. So the textures have been updated. Uh, all the home menus, like I said, there's examples and stuff in the folders and that you can get and look and you can see how to create your own themes. Um, if you add more systems, it's as simple as just adding a folder into another folder, running a batch file and it produces a system list.xml and you put that in a specific folder and every the ROMs will just start appearing and stuff like that, or the emulators. It's easy to add emulators. If you know what you're doing, you can do it. So you can add your own systems now, easily. Um, what else? Uh, 
but I don't actually know what else. Uh, check the GitHub for the rest of the stuff. Um, I can't exactly remember what's new because it's been a few months I've been adding to it here and there. Uh, I'll be doing some more home menus as well. I'm going to do a carousel, well, oh, sorry, a carousel, but I'm going to do one that's vertical. So a bit like Hyperspin, for example. So I'll do one like that. Um, then I can be bothered. So that'll be soon. Well, soonish. Uh, I'm going to add favourites as well, so you'll be able to uh, add emulator ROMs to your favourites list, same with Xbox and stuff like that, and yeah, so you can have a favourites list, and you'll be able to remove them, stuff like that, it just acts like XBMC's favourite list, so it'll be added the exact same way. So yeah, um can't think if there's anything else that I've added. Well, if there is, just check the GitHub. You'll see the changes and stuff like that in the changes.txt file. It lists all the changes I've made. Like I said, most of the back end. So, yeah. Uh, actually, I'll launch a ROM so you can see. Oh, let's do a random. Ultimate, there we go. There you go, I keep forgetting that's random now. So, every emulator that I've added manually is pre-configured. Um, the buttons and all that are all pre-configured. I fixed the, what was it, the Master System and the Game Gear and I think the NES controls, uh, two button emulators that use two buttons, or the Mad Map emulators that use two buttons, don't use B, they use A and C in the menu for some strange reason, uh, and I didn't realise that, so yeah, fixed those, but I fixed those a couple of weeks ago. Um, yeah. So, I, I just some my GitHub, download it. If you're already running it, you might want to do a fresh install because of the way I changed all the home layout and stuff like that, all that's all changed. All that's changed. So, you might want to do a fresh install. Scan in your ROMs. Oh, if you don't rescan your ROMs, you won't get the jump to letter. So you need to rescan your ROMs to get that. So, yeah. So, thanks for watching. Cheerio.